So today, another post on Engadget caught my eye. The tech site is shutting down their comment section. It's only for a week, but I thought the piece describing the shutdown was definitely worthy of discussion. So joining us today from Engadget is Terrence O'Brien, Managing Editor, and Amber Bauman, Community Content Editor. Welcome to you both. Hi. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on. So, uh, Terrence, let's start with you. What prompted the shutdown? Uh, well, a couple of different things. Uh, I'm sure anybody who's ever visited the internet before is familiar with the general uh, population of trolls that is out there. Um, and just recently on some posts, things had kind of started to get a little bit out of hand. In particular, we run a sex and romance column. Some of the responses were uh, a little bit homophobic, uh, a little bit abrasive and aggressive, and just basically super ignorant. And this is not specific to his post, but this was one of the things that sort of spurred this move forward. This has been unfortunately ongoing as we've branched out and started covering uh, diversity in tech a lot more recently and stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely see that on all the sites. Whenever anyone talks about diversity or women's issues, it's often that's where the comments uh, get to be the worst. So Amber, how much time were you spending on managing the comment section? Oh, um, on a daily basis, you're talking about easily a, an hour or two a day um, in the morning. And then probably I would check in about every 20 minutes or so throughout the day to see new comments that had appeared to bust the spam bots, to respond to somebody who had said something that was incorrect, or to thank a reader on, on the comments where they pointed out an error that we had made. Um, so it became increasingly time intensive. Yeah, I mean, so did you try responding to comments at all? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the whole reason of comments is to have a dialogue with our readers, and we want that dialogue. So I, I try to respond to comments when I can, um, in the case of Chris's article in particular, those responses became increasingly vitrolic and contentious to the point where it just became kind of untenable, even when both of us were responding in real time. Yeah, I mean, I uh, spoke on Twitter with uh, Carrie, who is on your network, does a show on your network, because I've seen her uh, when she'll respond to her YouTube comments, when YouTube, as we all know, is part of often the worst place for this. Uh, but she was, really, she was really inspiring because, you know, people would be saying things that, you know, were not so kind and she would respond, she was funny. And, you know, so, and, you know, to what extent, I mean, that it's, it's frustrating because sometimes that works. Sometimes people are surprised like, hey, you're a real human being. I had no idea. Uh, but then sometimes you have to have another solution. So is, was there, is there any technology? Is there a new technology that you're trying to help solve this problem? Well, there are a variety of different uh, softwares that have uh, been rolled out. Uh, Civil is a more recent software that requires commenters to uh, vote on other comments before they're permitted to submit their own comment. Uh, there are a couple others that I'm looking into and researching to try and see what different uh, types of things they're trying to do as far as making comments a friendlier place for everybody to participate. Um, I know that when you look at medium posts, they don't have a comment section so much as they have annotations that appear next to the text. So there are a variety of different softwares and uh, solutions that people are trying to roll out to various different articles in order to solve this problem. But in the end of the day, there's not really ever a substitute for human moderation. Yeah, and that's not really feasible and to that extent. It's time intensive, it's work intensive, and there's an emotional cost too. I mean, when you spend your entire day literally kind of up to your waist and trolling comments or such negativity, it's hard to then continue on your day and feel positive about your community or contribute stuff as a writer when you know all the blowback that you're going to get for all your pieces. So Terrence, do you think this is get, has it been getting worse? Um, yeah, I'd say yes and no. This is not the first time we've turned off comments at Engadget. Um, and again, this is a temporary thing. We'll turn them back on. and. You know, there's plenty of other avenues for our readers to communicate with us. We can't turn off comments on Facebook. Uh, you can still message us on Twitter. And we even have public access, which is a platform for our readers to publish their own content that's, you know, broader and bigger than just commenting on an existing article where they can share their own opinions in a more full-fledged format. Um, so there's still plenty of avenues for people to talk and communicate with each other. but. Every so often, it just seems that the comments get progressively worse and they start to deteriorate. And I think, you know, part of it goes to this thing, the best 
tool, the best, there is no replacement for, you know, human moderation. But people get tired of the trolls. And what happens is over the course of time, the the trolls start to push out the more reasonable voices, the nicer voices. And, you know, I've had plenty of com- conversations with readers and readers who are very aggressive or very negative to start. But usually once you engage them in conversation, they come around, they'll, you know, have a reasonable debate with you or, you know, even apologize sometimes if they do realize that they've kind of got out of hand or said something that they shouldn't have and attacked somebody. Uh, But for whatever reason, what's happened here and what has happened before is just those people are getting shouted down by the ones who won't listen to reason. And this is sort of like, we're just doing a pause, let everybody step back. Hopefully the trolls will move on to someplace else uh, or, you know, just get off the internet in general, but we know that'll never happen. Um, and, you know, everybody can come back, feel refreshed, and maybe feel a little bit better about trying to engage in conversation again, as opposed to just saying to themselves, well, normally I'd comment on this, but I don't want to anymore because I just know somebody's going to hurl insults at me or threaten me or whatever. So as an editor, have you considered, like, stopping writing about diversity or inclusion? Has that ever been on the table? Like, to start like to uh, change your content because of the situation? Absolutely not, but 100%. I I mean, our job at Engadget is to talk about the ways that technology impacts us and how it relates to our culture in the most important ways and how it reflects us as a society. And those are important issues to address. Uh, If it makes some people uncomfortable, if there's, uh, you know, some white guys out there who think that somehow we're keeping them down by writing about how there isn't enough women or minority representation in the tech industry. I'm really sorry, but you know, you're, you're plenty represented. Your voice has been heard. Don't worry about it. Uh, So Georgia, this is a question for you. Um, I sometimes wonder if, uh, you know, I I have this image often when I get the worst kind of troll comments that it's, you know, some 40 year old man in his mother's basement. But I think that a lot of these people might be young people who are figuring out how to be people and they don't, they don't know yet. It's not that they're sociopaths. Uh, My husband's a high school teacher, and he said, to some extent, all high school kids are sociopaths (laughs) just because you haven't learned yet how to be a person. So do you think that's a lot of what's going on here? I think that it's multifold. So, yes, I think that a lot of the comments are just young kids blowing off steam, angry and wanting to get a reaction. And so a lot of times someone just doesn't understand the effect that they have. Often when we've replied to comments, they're like, I'm so sorry, I didn't even know that you know you even cared or even read the comments. I was just angry, lost my job, and you were the first face that I saw. And so I blew off steam with that. And I think that in a lot of other cases, we've been, re- our, our culture right now has been rewarding a reactivity and demagoguery. And so the loudest, most angry voice is the one that everyone responds to, and they're wanting to have this outlet to lash out at society or, you know, a certain set of people. And so they're able to, because right now the internet allows you to be anonymous to it and not accountable for those actions. And because of that, there's no cost. There's no cost. They they can get away with it. They can then make an, even another account. And so they, they get this area where they can feel safe at being angry. And it's a lot of people that are dealing with some very serious issues. And it's not going to get better from just, you know, yelling at the internet. But for a moment, they feel um, a decrease in their levels of uh, stress hormones because of that. And so it works for them. Now, Amber, in the article, you explained that this wasn't censorship. Can you uh, talk a little bit about what you heard from readers that made you have to add that this wasn't censorship? Well, I, I do a lot of research as the community content manager about other types of comment systems, other places where comments have been shut down and the reader reaction to that. And it seems as though often the reaction is, you don't want to hear our voices. You're just shutting down your ears. This is censorship. And Engadget's comment system isn't the 
the entire internet is the thing. It's our house. It's where we live. And if you want to fight or cause a ruckus, you can go outside and do that. You can go to anywhere else on the internet, Twitter or Facebook or your own personal blog. We're not actually silencing your voice. We're trying to show you what is and is not appropriate behavior in our house. And the rules are different on our website because we're creating a community and we get to set those guidelines.